And what we have here that is tropical forage, right? Warm season. This is limpo grass, but we have all different star and they are not the best forage to make silage because it doesn't have a lot of soluble sugars for fermentation. So that's what happened. The silage is, is never really good because it's not like corn. Corn silage is good, sorghum silage is good because it has starch and sugar, but this doesn't. It has a lot of cell wall that doesn't ferment very well. So, and we still see a lot of this wrapping and, and, and round bale silage. So we decide to create some technology to improve the fermentation and actually improve the forage that we are preserving and the fermentation. That means we need more sugar inside of that bag for fermentation. If the grass doesn't have some, we need to provide some. And I, I did some work in small silos and it got a very good result. I did uh, citrus pulp and I did molasses. So what I did, adding citrus pulp and molasses to the forage, we add sugars. So we improve the fermentation. That's pretty simple. So citrus pulp is very good, but doesn't do very well for us because I couldn't find a good way to mix in the forage on a practical standpoint. If I come in my small silos, that is, is easy to do. You mix by hand. But when you drop the dry citrus pulp here on the top, you come with the baler and the citrus fly away and that will become an expensive fertilizer so we we didn't like the citrus pulp in that matter but the molasses do really well because it's liquid and will drop on the wind row and and stick on the forge so it's very easy to do and Dennis our farm manager and and I we developed the technology on how to drop the molasses on the forge and we as you are a producer to you know you don't want another piece of equipment in your barn right another one they have to pay and keep it so we just use the same tank that we use to feed the molasses and we put a pvc on the back and you have holes on that pvc they will just let it drip in the windrow and after it drip in the windrow we come and bail and wrap it so the the, the rates that we are working right now is about two percent that means if you have a ton of forage, we, we drop about 40 pounds of molasses on the top of the windrow and come and bale. And, and Ryan will show us, he'll drive the tractor just the way that we are doing right now. So we finished that work and we, we made some silage and now we are feeding heifers. And he, the outcome has been very good, improved the digestibility and improved the fermentation. You get something that when you open the side, it smells really good because of the extra molasses. And if you think about it, 40 pounds per ton of forage is not much. It's reasonable, I think. Mm -hmm. You can add more if you think it's economical, but I think that 40 pounds is the number that will improve the silage and still may be cost effective. That's what we think. So I just would like, because the technology to do it would be something limiting because we didn't have any spray or anything. So, and Ryan will just show you what we did here and how we are applying a big about the rate that we are putting on the top and that's what is the end product right here. So and if you have a very good silage, very good, you probably don't need molasses. If you have a very good grass fertilized in three weeks regrowth, you probably don't need it. If you have something that's more stemmy and a little bit over maturing and something that you know is not very good, that technology here may, may really help you to have a better outcome when you open the silo and have a better silo. They don't have no problem with it. Jeff. Clean up. 
I think the mail is take and bail quite a bit of this, and, and I can clean up it from the dirty one above. Yeah, I basically just water hose. I'll just kick the bailer about three quarters of the way over, leave the dish on the bail, and just leave it running. And just going to hose it down to the top, and that water will work around there. And it, it's very water soluble. It cleans up pretty easily. Well, Joe, if, you know, you've got a tanker behind a tractor, that's another piece of equipment. Right. Even if it's a tanker, you have for teeth. Uh, if you added a piece of equipment like a large tank, if you're using a sizable tractor on the baler, and you put a front mount tank, conceivably, could we get that thing on? Uh, you know, my operators don't get out of the cab if you provide them a cab. Uh -huh. <laughs> we need to develop a control to shut that valve off uh -huh. while we're wrapping a bale and maybe put it right on the baler tractor. Yeah. And add it hydraulic run. Yeah, just a little. You know, right, a small, you know, with all these controls on hydraulics today, you can dial something down for yeah. maybe a small, I, I, I'm thinking. I, th I think somebody with more knowledge on, on machinery and uh, can do a much better job here. And and actually up north, in, in the west, they ha they have these molasses on grass silage when they don't bail alfalfa. And they have already the sprayers that comes when they, they fill the bags out of the, you know, when they are filling the sausage, they have the sprayer there that spray right after. And that has been around and I think it's much better than this. Uh, but if you don't, if somebody don't have it, it's as cheap as a big